In this presentation, we will look at some costing methods. We will briefly touch upon tangible goods and intangible goods. Examples of tangible goods are like manufacturing FMCG products or fast moving consumer good products. Whereas intangible goods is more like services, like consulting services, education services, training services, and any other different type of services like banking and any other energy providers and so on. So the tangible goods usually has a bills of materials, a routing, both of them combined gives you a recipe. So it's more of a production environment. Intangible goods will have services. So they have processes, outsourcing activities. It's all just about activities and services. So tangible goods, you externally procure raw materials and packaging materials to produce your finished goods materials. Whereas intangible goods, you do not procure any raw materials or any packaging materials because you're doing primarily services. Most of your procurement will be as an expense or assets. Tangible goods has stocks and inventories for all the different types of material types, raw material, packaging material, semi-finished goods and finished goods. You have your stocks and inventories. You have product cost estimates and they are also used for your inventory valuation. Whereas intangible goods is all services, so there are no stocks or inventories. So you can see tangible, intangible goods are mostly items which you cannot see. They are all mostly service oriented and tangible goods are actually products which you can see and they are mostly from manufacturing or fast moving consumer goods items. So product costing is only applied for the tangible goods section. You cannot use product costing and you will actually will not have a proper outcome if you try to use product costing to do for service based industries. So primarily we use product costing for manufacturing based industries. Let's look at some costing methods. You have single level costing, multi level costing, cost estimate with quantity structure. You can also do it without the quantity structure and then you have costing run. We'll come back to this later. Let's look at these two single level costing and multi level costing. And this can be done with something called a base planning object. We look at in more detail what's the base planning object in the next slide. Remember, we in when you create our bills of materials, we had single level and we had multi level bills of materials. And we saw how, for example, you can create a one kilogram vanilla cake. And if you want to have icing also, and icing is another component which needs to be assembled. So that's another second level coming up. So we had something, an example for multi level bills of materials. But in this scenario, we're just talking about without using any quantity structure, which means we're not using any material mass data. We're just simply creating a base planning object with single level and multi level. We'll look at this later when we do the uh, creation of the base planning object. So what is a base planning object? Well, it allows you to enter a quantity structure manually. So you can cost without accessing any bills of materials or routing. So you don't have to create any bills of material. You don't have to create any routings, which means you don't have to do anything with the MM module or your PP module. You can straight away go inside the CO module and create your base planning object with your own quantity structure. And you can cost new products without a material master, which means, as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to create any material master, any bills of materials or routing. You can just put a, a structure to cost your new products. Something which you like a prototyping and estimating what are the quantities and the amounts you need. So it's like an Excel sheet where you enter all your information over there. So you can do the same thing in your Excel. You can put say, I need this amount of item from this material. It'll cost me this much and so on. But rather than having it in an Excel file, you can put it straight away in the system. And that is called this base planning object. We will look at creating some examples in that. And base planning object has a costing variant also. It's called PG. Now this is not the normal costing variant which we earlier configured. This is base planning's own costing variant, which does not require any configuration. It comes as a default PG for your when you create the base planning object. And base planning object is something like a master data. So you don't have to do any config pre-configuration, anything, nothing's required. You can straight away go inside the SAP EC access menu and create as many base planning objects as you want. So I've taken an example to build a kite. So items I need a plastic blue sheet over here, some wooden sticks, some nylon string and some glue. With all these five items, I'm going to build a kite. 
Now I'm not going to create any material master at all. I'm not going to create any bills of material and I'm not going to create any routing activities or no activity types or nothing to do with any cost and test. So without touching any of these objects, I'm straight away going to create a base planning object and I'm going to put the amounts of